Chief Soy, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 28th. We're going to start off with the oath of office. Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to thank the board again uh, for allowing us to swear in our officers. I think it's an important thing for the community to see who the people are that are going to be coming in to protect them in their name and uh, enforce the laws of this state and the ordinance of this town. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to have Officer Zachary Terenzoni, some front and center, if you would, Zach, and the town clerk would come up to administer the oath. To the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham, to Zachary S. Terenzoni of Peabody, Massachusetts in the county of Essex, whereas there is a vacancy in the office of full-time police officer in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Zachary S. Terenzoni, as full-time police officer of said town, and upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liability of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your state. Given under my hand and seal, the 28th day of January, 2019, Fred Welch, town manager. Now, repeat after me. I, Zachary S. Terenzoni. I, Zachary S. Terenzoni. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As a full-time police officer. As a full-time police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of the, this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. While he's signing his young wife away, uh, I'd ask Don Terenzoni to come up and he will begin the badge on his son. <laughs> Got the best one, so dig right in. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. Chief Sawyer for giving me this opportunity on the board, Hampton. Um, I'd also like to thank my family for all the love and support uh, for this great opportunity. So thank you very much. Sure, this week, that's what we would like to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, yeah. sometimes they don't poke through that it material like so a well. Thing, but yeah, they're not as sharp as that you think they are. Wow. That's nice, though, family and everything. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing. Again, good evening. Welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 28th. First, we have a number of public hearings, <laughs> and they have all been posted, and this one is very lengthy, so I'm only going to read part of it. Pursuant to RSA 3195B3A, for the purpose of complying with the provisions of RSA 3195B3 for the following, and it's to apply and accept and expend unanticipated funds in the amount of $10,000 or more 
from the following in the 2019 uh, Act. And there is a list of probably 40 or 50 or more grants. So public hearing is now open. Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, uh, we do this every year. It's to save uh, having to hold a public hearing every other week as grants come through and are available to the town. Uh, we do these in advance so that, in fact, we can streamline the process. This allows us to go ahead and apply for grants and then bring them back to the board for approval in accordance with the statute. Is there any questions or comments from the audience? Seeing none, bring it back to the board. Is there anything from the board? Uh, it doesn't seem that we need any more than one hearing, Mr. Chairman. I believe we only need the one hearing. So That's I will be happy to, uh, to move that we uh, go ahead and um, try to get as many resources as possible out of in these 2019. institutions second. in 2019. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Our second uh, public hearing is pursuant to the provisions of RSA 289. The town of Hampton is, Hampton is seeking to declare the following cemeteries abandoned and will assume responsibility of named cemeteries. The first one is the Bride Hill Cemetery. It's the old burying ground known as the Bride Hill Cemetery located on Exeter Road. And it goes in and has another list. The next one is Ye Old Neighborhood Cemetery. It is it, so at, known as the Ye Old Neighborhood Cemetery, also known as the Exeter Road Cemetery, off Exeter Road. And it gives that one. And the third one is the Shaw Family C Cemetery. The old burial ground known as the Shaw Family Cemetery is located off U.S. Route 1, Lafayette Road, opposite the Tidewater Campgrounds. The next one is the Sanborn Brown Family Cemetery. This is the old burial ground known as the Sanborn Brown Family Cemetery located off number 10 Gale Road. Those are the four, uh, Those are the four. four that we have right now. Is mm -hmm. there anybody here from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think this is an excellent idea and I uh, will move that we accept the town manager's uh, delineation of these four old cemeteries and bringing our, our books up to date. These are important historical sites. Second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Next public hearing is RSA 4114A, a second hearing for 36 Huckleberry Lane, map 115, a lot 34. The gifting of land to the town at 36 Huckleberry Lane, map 115, lot 34. And number two is the acceptance of a right of access for a vegetation restriction area. <laughs> Anybody from the public who want to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. This is the second hearing. We have to have a third final hearing. Two weeks now. So this is the second of, of three right. hearings. Are we all done with this one? Right. Okay. The next one is RSA 4114, a second hearing on 817 Ocean Boulevard, map 197, lot 30, slash 1. Petition is request to release the town-owned deeded restriction on the formerly leased land. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this one? Again, this is the second hearing. It will come back to the board for a third time at our next meeting, I believe. Two weeks. Yes. Two weeks. Next, next week. Yeah. Anybody on the board like to speak? No. Seeing none. Next one is RSA 4114A, a second hearing for 217th Street, map 168, lot 78, slash 1. The petitioner's request to construct a 5.5 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot high freestanding storage building on their property four and a half feet from the side and rear property lines. Anybody from the public like to speak? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mark Gerald, Town Attorney. Uh, the board uh, received, I believe, a communication in writing 
just for the record, uh, dated today from the conservation coordinator, Rayanne Dion, in which she uh, explains the Conservation Commission's recommendation letter and in particular addresses the uh, impervious coverage mm -hmm. that is involved here. That uh, the fact that the additional building within the setback would add to the impervious coverage was the basis for the Conservation Commission's opposition. Uh, there had also been a letter of opposition from the Planning Board. Okay. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none, anybody from the board? Mary Louise? I agree with uh, planning, and uh, this should not happen. We have enough trouble with the lack of pervious surfaces at the beach. Anybody else from the board? <clears throat> it does look like there's uh, quite an intensification there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anything else from the board? Nope. Seeing none, we will, we will close this. Uh, public hearings at 713. Excellent. So, uh, and those, those previous one, two, four, five, and six. Yeah, four, we'll five, and six. So the previous next. three will be on for our meeting in two weeks. Yeah. Public comment period. Is anybody from the public would like to speak? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. I signed up and received many emails from town telling various things like the uh, pickup of trash. And ho However, this past last week, for the majority of the week, Church Street was pretty much closed except for local traffic, and I never received any kind of notification on this thing. And I'm just um, pretty disappointed because it's the only way out of my uh, street. So, uh, and the other thing is that the, the, the the construction is not smooth to the point where that they say travel will be at your own risk. Well, there's only one way out. So I think they're putting the locals in a bind for that thing. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. We will uh, make sure that the public works is aware of that. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? <coughs> Seth McNally, uh, here with the New Hampshire Seacoast Greenway Rail Trail Project. Um, just wanted to deliver a petition from the Rail Trail Conservancy. The last 10 days, we were able to get 654 signatures asking you guys to support the trail. 237 of those are from Hampton. So I think there's a lot of support for it. Just wanted to give this to you guys. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else from this public like to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. Uh, nothing at the moment. I hope to see everyone in town on Saturday at the Liberty Session at Winnicott at High, 8.30 a.m. Regina? Yeah, I'll second that <laughs> announcement. And also on Wednesday, there's the uh, NHGOT, the Bridge Informational Public yep. Hearing. So that is at 7 o'clock at the Seabrook Community, Community Center. Center. So just if anyone's interested in that and what they have planned, hope to see you there. Jim. Yeah, ditto on those two things. And the Cable Renewal Committee, uh, hopefully this uh, Wednesday, will have a survey online that people can take uh, with concerning their, their, their concerns about the Comcast cable. Good. So hopefully we're gonna get that, we're gonna get the results. We also will have hard copies in the town hall here and hard copies right. in the library. So people can pick up a hard copy if they don't have a computer and put down what they want. So that hopefully that's going to be this Wednesday. That we're, we're working on it. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Rick, do you have anything? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Welch, when is the end of the sign-up period for uh, people that Friday. 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 Is Friday. Yeah. So Friday is the last day to put your name out there if you want to run for um, one of the peti petition, one of the positions that are open, um, including the planning board, the uh, uh, budget committee, zoning, zoning board, board, the board of selectmen, and I just want to put it out there that this is non-political. Um, you don't need to be a Republican or a Democrat. You should have an independent spirit to be part of the town politics. So I just would like to bring 
that to everyone's attention because we certainly could use more people taking part. Thank you. Mayor Lewis. Uh, related to what Mr. Waddell said, Jim, could we bring some <coughs> copies of that survey to the deliberative session, do you think? If, 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 yeah, they're editing, just doing final editing right now. So yeah, because if yes. we could have extra copies, yeah. well, we may not get 30,000 like yeah. the Patriots did, but we'll, do. we'll have people. All right, well, everybody covered all my announcements. So the consent agenda, we have cemetery deeds, we have a 4M Street corrective assignment of a lease. We have Finest Kind Brewery request for a one-day extension of food and beverage service. We have the U.S. Virginia appointments. That is for the, it says U.S. Virginia, but is, what did we call it? it that was, was going to be the Navy Committee. The Navy Committee, yes, yes that's what it was going to be called. And I'll just uh, list those because I want to thank these people for stepping forward. It's Dan Lanio. Francis Colbert, Diana Martin, Warren Wright, uh, Rich Rania, Michelle Zeno, Warren Mackinson, Chris Kalat, Kudalis, Kudalis, Donna Bennett, Mike Edgar, Renee Boudreau, and Regina Barnes. Mr. Chairman, yes, I was speaking with Donna Bennett today, and she said that she's not going to be able to do it because she's has something come up with her father which she's going to have to be taken care so of. So we'll take that off and so we will still look for another one if, if yeah. people are interested. Good. So I have a motion on the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Approval of the minutes for Jul January 17th, Mr. 2019 public and non-public session. Mr. Chairman, I will move the minutes of January 7th, 2019 public and non-public sessions. Oh. We have a motion, Second. seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I will move the minutes of January 14, 2019, public session and non-public session. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Right. Okay. Next thing we have appointments. Renee Boudreau, Recreation Department, quarterly report. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, it seems like we have quite Careful the list. Careful with the mic. Put it down a little bit. That's good. A little better? All we right. want everybody to hear you. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Um, so starting off the new year, um, what we decided to do is I noticed that our office staff and our parks crew um, at the moment weren't up to date on some certifications like CPR and first aid. Um, so we just finished. Some of our staff did CPR with the fire department last week. And also what we've realized is the people driving our bus didn't have any formal training from any insurance companies or anything like that, so we're putting something in place where Primex came last week and did a training with most of our staff and some of the library whose staff has expressed an interest in um, driving the bus for some events with the library. So we're working in collaboration with them on that. And then the ones who weren't able to attend the trainings will get rescheduled in the coming months. Um, couple other big events. We have our Tuckfield summer camps uh, sign up starting February 11th. So that's a Monday, I believe, and that's gonna be online registration so you don't have to come into the office and uh, wait in line. This year, um, with our Easter egg dig, which is scheduled for April 13th, we've had, um, last year after the dig, we had a response from some concerned people regarding where do the, some of the eggs go that don't get picked up. Um, and it's, it's been an ongoing thing, and last year it got kind of big. So in the off season before, we were trying to figure out a way to make sure that we were doing our part to keep the ocean clean. And just so happens that we have a gentleman in town, a student at the academy named Max Ronner Bland, who has an actual program called Always in Motion to Save the Ocean. He is a very dedicated, uh, kid who's looking to save the ocean and do his part to keep it clean. Um, we got a little reverb? Yeah, we do. All right, try to keep it back a little bit. So we've teamed up with him and directly after our Easter egg dig, Max is going to have a cleanup based just in the section where we rope off for the eggs that we bury. And he's going to put the effort in and we're hoping that the community will come out and help his cleanup and uh, sign up to help the, the day of that event. And that will be at 12 o'clock on the 13th, directly after our Easter egg dig. Um, 
some other stuff that we have upcoming that's going to be on its way. We are uh, sending out our brochure in the beginning of February for the spring and summer activities and programs we're going to have. Um, we're also going to be taking applications for our summer camp staff and some other things. We were talking about the uh, USS Virginia program and our last meeting we had a very successful turnout um, and we've had multiple ideas on what to do and one of the things that came up was an adopt a sailor program um, that Michelle Zeno I, I believe was the one who brought that up and we're looking to match sailors up that may be on base or up at the shipyard that don't have a chance to get out much or they're they're just looking for some camaraderie during the holidays or something to that effect and we're looking for families that may have kids in that age bracket or someone who would take them on if they'd like to spend a holiday or just go out on a weekend and do something so it's seems to be one of the more popular things that came up and we've had a response from the shipyard with a couple of people already that are looking to be I won't call it placed but are interested in it so we're uh, it's moving and we're trying to make those connections for those sailors so um, other than that we pretty much are uh, offering programs year-round so we're just saying if you're interested check out hamptonrec.org and um, any other questions I know our uh, Kids Kingdom playground is ongoing we're always trying to line that up with help and volunteers and I'm uh, meeting with the Rotary tomorrow so hopefully that will be able to help in that mission and job we have ahead of us there so excellent any questions for Renee uh, I stopped by to see Renee this morning and I suggested that as an activity for these nice sailors they can go water skiing with the submarine pulling them okay Regina you have so on that, the post Easter egg dig beach cleanup project, that's going to be April 13th? It's the same, it's the right directly after the Easter egg dig it. The dig is at 11, the, it's really all intense over in 45 minutes or less. He's going to start at 12 o'clock. Okay, so it's the same day. All yes. Right. All right, thank you. And you're always looking for people to help you bury eggs too. We are you? always looking for help there too. <laughs> so, good point. Uh, good report, you got a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Good show. Okay. Yep. Thank you for your report. No problem. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, we, is Christy here? She's not here? No, she, she's going to be late. So we will go with Steve Falzone, trustee of the trust funds. Good evening, Steve. How are you? Good. Good evening, and thanks for having me. Uh, just a quick wrap of the year here. Fund had a good year. I was having a real good year until the fourth quarter, and then <laughs> that was the end of that as the market sort of decided to uh, go in all kinds of crazy directions. Uh, the fund still did generate $820,000 to the town. That's an 11% increase over last year's revenue. Uh, and I don't really have too much more than that. I mean, it's the, the other funds are still in pretty good shape, all the various other funds that we keep an eye on as well. But the real estate fund is the main fund, and that's pretty much what we uh, worry about most of the time. It is a pretty decent size fund on the management. Mm -hmm. uh, David and his team over at uh, Barry Point did another great job again this year. We're in pretty good shape. I mean, to, for the for the fund to you know ret to have a lower return than it did the year before, investment wise, it's positioned really well to keep throwing off the income that it's designed to throw off. Any questions? Questions? Uh, we have been very fortunate with uh, our uh, representatives, uh, with the trust funds, the trustees of the trust funds, uh, conservative, uh, very careful investment. Uh, I, I can't say enough about how, uh, how extraordinary you gentlemen have been. Excellent mm -hmm. job. David and his team do a really good job. You really, really watch really the money. Job. Very good. Regina? Yeah, I mean, I'll know that. I'm looking at the year-end report for the, yeah. just the real estate trust fund, and that's $820,000. And then we have Christie's financials that are showing with all our trust and agency funds, that's revenue of almost $871,000. So great. that's a real good way to yeah. offset some of the expenses. So. Thank you for doing such a good job. The town is very fortunate to have that. It really is. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, super job. And, uh, you know, any fund that 
produces eight hundred and seven thousand dollars for the town. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, yes. can't stuff. go wrong. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it, um, it looks like the returns are very good compared to, a, <coughs> excuse me, what I've seen a lot of people personally have happened with theirs. I'm sure I've so thank you. Yeah, like and, and you're absolutely right. There are, were very few towns that have what we have. Very and, fortunate. Uh, you know, our, our, some of our forefathers were pretty smart when they took that money from the, That's for sure. from the beach land, lease land and put That's it together sure. to use for this. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it, it's worked out well for this town. And it really has. A lot of towns would love to have that <laughs> nest egg sitting there and, and don't. So. That's for sure. And there is a trustee seat up for election this year. So if anybody's interested. Who, whose seat is up? Uh, it's, uh, it was uh, Bill Hartley's seat that Dave yeah. Hamilton, thank you, Dave, uh, fulfilled his term. So is he going to run? For, I don't believe so. Leslie. That's too bad. Yeah, you know, he, he he was kind and gracious enough to step in and fill Bill's term, and uh, you just go down to town hall and see Shirley, and she'll get you signed up, I guess. Okay, do it by Friday. Friday. By Friday. Friday's thank alone. You. Thank you. The next one is Ed Tinker. Contract Chief Assessor. Good evening. Good evening. I think the reason I'm here this evening, I wanted to clarify um, about a month ago, I believe you signed the equalization form yep. for the state. That was the purpose of that form was to release the sales data so the state could develop or determine the final equalization ratio uh, for 2018. Um, we only compile and verify the sales. The state does the actual final ratios. And as part of that, um, I gave everyone a, a cover sheet showing ratios mm -hmm. broken out by use type. Um, Unfortunately, the residential page was the prior years, mm -hmm. which for some reason got into the report. Um, I did um, give to Mr. Welch um, an updated uh, report for you that shows the correct ratio. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I can answer those now for you. Mayor hey, Louise? Um, not at the moment, I think. Regina? Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Tinker, yeah, I just want, I think you explained it well. I know there was some confusion and it just was a, a glitch and the MS1 that the Board of Selectmen did sign, that was the total number. So that number was right, that would right on the right number. A, right, exactly. Yeah. So subsequently you fixed the error and we have the ratios as they are today. Right, and, and the state should be responding any time now with the final ratios, which should mimic what we sent them, it may change by a tenth of a percent or something. You, typically, they're pretty pretty right on with the numbers. Jim? Yeah, C can you just explain to people what an equalization ratio is? Just because, you know, you say that, yeah. do, do people understand what you're talking about? We may, but do people out it's, there? It's a ratio between assessed values and sale properties, or prop, you know, sale, sale prices. So during the year when properties sell, we look at the assessment in relation to those sale properties. Um, it's assessments and we divide that by sale prices to come up with a ratio. Um, the ratio, acceptable ratio is between 90 and 110%. Um, we try to stay within that limit. Um, there's other ratios that go with it, but the equalization ratio is an indicator of market conditions. Um, what, what we estimated for this year for 18 was around 87, 87 and a half percent, which is below the 90 percent minimum. Uh, just indicating that the market continues to to rise, uh, while assessments, of course, are relative to 2016. The last revaluation was done in 2016. Thank you. So, what happens um, when people? Um, uh, are having homes that are selling for considerably less than what the less than that 10% buffer um, that are like right next to them as I've had a few people have come to me about that yeah I mean there's going to be sales that are going to have a range it's, it's actually the ratio is an average of all the sales um, 
this year, if I remember correctly, we had uh, close to 500 qualified sales that were analyzed. The ratios are always going to be where sales are 10%, 15% above market, even higher potentially. But there will be properties that sell in the other direction. Yeah. So what, what assessing is, is trying to get in, uh, develop uh, base rates and adjustments that lay evenly over every property to make it fair and equitable. But it's, it's almost like a bell curve when, when it's done. So there are going to be sales that are 100%, but there's also going to be sales that, as part of the revaluation, that kind of spread out a little bit mm. <clears throat> below and above the 100%. Yeah. The COD, which is a ratio that, that yeah. looks at the coefficient of dispersion, meaning mm -hmm. The lower the coefficient, the tighter the sales data is. So when you typically do a revaluation, when you get a five or six percent COD, okay. what it means is that five, the ninety percentile of those sales are within five or six percent higher or low of the median, whatever the median end up, ends up being. But as the ratio goes down like it is now, uh, the COD is in the twelve percent range right now. So it's saying 12% of the 90% per percentile of those would be below that 87% and then above. So the bell kind of moves, and it's now moving down instead of at or above 100%. Mr. Chairman, can I just sure. something? We had a phone conversation earlier to go over some of this stuff, and you yeah. said that pretty much when the market is good, and stuff is selling high, I mean, that's going to have a indirect, the, our equalization ratio is going to be lower. Yeah, the, the, would that be safe to as say? As the sales appreciate, yeah, the ratio would go, then go lower because it's assessments compared to sale prices. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, I have one quick thought. Um, Ed, when you're checking on the sales, are you doing it by area, like beach sales, uptown sales, uh, condo sales, or, or is it just sales right across the board? Well, it's all, it's all sales when the, race, when the equalization ratio. Yeah. yeah. During the revaluation, though, we do do that. We, 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 do, we look at neighborhoods. Okay. Because so, we have to develop assessments for everybody, right? Okay. So we'll look at, of course, condo sales, etc. We'll yeah. look at waterfront. We'll look at uh, okay. marsh. Front properties. We'll look at the main beach, the north beach, Boar's Head. Uh, we have neighborhoods that we look at individually. And in light of what we're seeing now, with people talking about the ocean rising and having a lot of um, wet uh, and uh, wet incursion into, say, the beach area and so forth, does that factor into what you're calculating as to the value of the properties? If properties are getting flooded every year or whatever, basically assessments are based on market conditions. Okay. So if the market conditions continue to rise, or if they go down, I mean, based on whatever reason, we'll look at a neighborhood. If a neighborhood say that sales are quite lower than another neighborhood, and they're okay. in close proximity to each other, then we would address that uh, relative to the sales that have happened. So if weather conditions are inhibiting sales, uh, that would show in, in the values. If it's inhibiting, meaning? Well, if, if the properties can't be sold or they're being sold for lower prices or so forth, that would, inf that would affect the... At the time of the reval, yeah. it would, the neighborhood could get affected by it. <laughs> so, um, what do you feel that the uh, amount of appreciation <coughs> is on the average for the town? Well, right is it now, up or down right now? It's up. It's up. By, past, about this, what would you say? Well, this past year, if the ratio, the equalization ratio ends up where we believe it to be at about 87.5%, hmm. it indicates um, from last year's 17's ratio of 94.2, we're looking at close to 7%. Um, Rockingham County, on average, for the past two or three years, has been about a 6% uh, increase in uh, 
sale property, the sale price of property, mm -hmm. as an average. You get everything's an average. Yeah, I've seen that seven percent um, bantered around quite a bit uh, through all of Rockingham County, I believe. Yeah, and I, I think condos are seeing. Um, there was a time when condos were lacking when there was a lot of development, but now we're seeing a, a, a condo sales equal or, or greater than single family sales mm -hmm. currently. Thank you. Yep. All set? Yep. Guess we're all set. All set? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Ed. Same here. Take care. Good night. Didn't see Christina yet. Oh, Christy. So we'll do the uh, Friends of the Hampton Branch Rail Trail Volunteer Group. Come on up, Seth. Steve, have they been provided with this? With what? The, from Mr. Bogle, the, uh, the newest. I would believe they have, eh? I just can got it at 12.30 today, so. Can we invite Senator Sherman to come up? I think he's here for This that. is, I mean, all these people are here, and yeah. if he wants to come up, he can, or? Yeah. Why don't you join us? I know he came especially for this. Yep, that's fine. Do us a favor when you speak first, just let us know who you are so we can have that for the record. Yeah, if it's all right with you, I'll do introductions. Sure, really that's quick. perfect. Uh, Christine Kenny from New Hampshire, uh, from the East Coast Greenway. Um, she'll talk briefly about the project. Uh, Libby Bartolini, a uh, uh, four year volunteer with the Friends of the Hampton Rail Trail as well as the New Hampshire Greenway Alliance. Seth McNally, Friends of the Hampton Rail Trail as well as New Hampshire Greenway Alliance. Uh, Tony Chioffley, uh he's got 10 plus years of uh, volunteer work with the getting this rail trail brought here. Um, Senator Sherman, mm -hmm. yeah, speaks for himself. <laughs> uh, Jerry Klima, uh, Coastal Trails Coalition, as well as a nine year um, selectman for Salisbury, as well as a trail advocate and volunteer down in the Ghost Trail and, and the Coastal Trails Coalition. So. Try to bring a big, uh, diverse group of people here that could answer any questions you guys might have. Wanted to offer our support as a volunteer group to help you guys maintain the trail uh, through volunteer groups. Uh, some of the best trails are able to um, really lower the cost of the town, if not eliminate it entirely. In our correspondence, you guys have seen, we want to do an adopt a trail program, tenth of a mile mile markers uh, with sponsorships, anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars per tenth of a mile. Uh, we think we can raise about three thousand dollars and would cover a majority of the cost of maintaining the trail um, christine if you don't mind just giving us a brief overview of the bigger picture and what we're connecting up with people need to be able to hear you so, so would you either use a microphone or you can use this microphone okay because you've only we've only got two microphones for you gentlemen but if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to explain, yeah, that, yeah. that would be great. Thank you. Because people do want to hear. Hello. Um, again, so I'm Christine Keeney. I'm from the East Coast Greenway Alliance. Um, we are a national organization that is developing a trail that goes from Calais, Maine, which is on the Canadian border down east, to all the way to Key West, Florida. Um, and I am the New England coordinator, so I cover Maine to Rhode Island. Um, and I'm really happy to be here tonight um, to be invited and to be able to speak about the Greenway with you all. Um, and basically what um, the East Coast Greenway, the idea there is that we're trying to build an off-road shared use path, um, meaning it's separated for traffic, it is usable by all different kinds of user groups, um, runners, walkers, bikers, um, some cases horseback riders, and some cases cross-country skiing, um, so a diverse set of user groups. Um, as well as a diverse set of users in terms of age, nationality, race. Um, so it's safe for you know five-year-olds. Um, it's safe for pushing baby strollers. It's safe for walking dogs. Um, and it's safe um, for folks that need to get out and get some exercise um, to have a place to do so. Um, we also are working to develop this trail so that it connects communities, um, so that you could pretend you could travel from here down to Boston on a shared use path, or you could travel from here to Portland on a shared use path, for example. So we want people to be able to have local opportunities to recreate, exercise, and to commute uh, to work. Um, and we also want to spur economic development by bringing 
um, both regional um, and national visitors um, to the different communities that we connect to. Um, so for example, um, in addition to using rail trails like the one that's proposed here um, locally, we also attract national visitors um, because people actually use the East Coast Greenways like the Appalachian Trail. Um, so they'll actually start in Key West and go to Maine, or they'll start in Maine and go to Key West, Florida. So um, we would be, we across the whole East Coast Greenway, we attract tens of millions of visitors every year. Um, and we believe once the project is complete that it'll be the most visited park um, in the United States, basically a linear park. Um, and in some cases there are benches, there are scenic overlooks, um, and in some cases, you know, you would just have the trail. Um, and I just want to give you really quickly, I don't want to take a lot of your time, just some statistics. Um, in New Hampshire, the whole East Coast Greenway route off-road would be 15.9 miles. And this project going from Portsmouth to the New Hampshire Massachusetts border is 14.1 miles. Meaning when this project is completed, the East Coast Greenway will be 89% completed in the state of New Hampshire. And right now it's 0% we're really hoping that you consider um, supporting this project um, and that we can work um, to find creative ways to help support um, the maintenance. Um, and I um, can certainly be a resource to you all as well as to the folks that are sitting here to give you some ideas of what some other trails do. Um, for example, the Eastern Trail just in Southern Maine, if you might be familiar with it, um, it goes from South Portland basically to Kenny Buck and it's a shared use path at Stone Dust um, and they have like a, um, a, man a Eastern Trail Management District for example so all the different towns um, they have one representative from the select board from all the towns um, and then they basically help to manage the maintenance of the trail together um, so there can be some cost savings and efficiencies there with the, all the different towns working together so there's just you don't have to do that um, but just one example of um, you know not very far away from here they have an agreement you know how the towns work together and things like that so um, again thank you for having me um, i'm happy to answer any questions and um, also be a resource going forward so thank you thank you anybody else want to speak before we I just had a couple of things I wanted to add. Um, this was part of the Hampton Master Plan in 2003. It's been on that document for a long time. To me, I think the Master Plan should be the document that's guiding the town and its decisions. Um, it's also been a part of the Safe Routes to School project. Uh, Alta Engineering came and uh, published a, a great report. Uh, I think we paid $26,000 as a town to figure out ways to make safe routes to school. This project was included uh, as a re recommended pro project for that. Um, as well as the Hampton Charette, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, for the town center. Uh, this project came up uh, a lot in the development of the plan uh, for the town center, which guided most of our, um, our, our zoning updates that we've made. So it's, it's not something new. You guys have probably heard about it a lot. We're just trying to bring it to the finish line here and, and get it done. Um, so I'll leave it to you guys unless anyone else has anything they'd like to add. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, being in my position with the 11 towns uh, and all the seacoast except for Portsmouth, this is, to me represents a huge uh, opportunity in many different ways. Number one is the recreation opportunity for the town of Hampton. Uh, and possibly really intermingled with that is the capacity to grow uh, this whole corridor um, from a business and recreation standpoint. Right now, if you think about it, in all the seacoast towns, really there's the beach and then, and then not much else in terms of recreation attractiveness, where people want to go, um, and what draws them. And I mean, locally, you know, there's a lot of residences, but the towns followed the rail line originally, and that's where you see the towns in Northampton, uh, Rye, um, and, but Hampton and Seabrook. So the towns that were there alongside the rail, and this is what I find most exciting, this is an opportunity to completely revitalize. And so you look at the experience in other, even in New Hampshire, the experience um, in central New Hampshire with their rail trails and the revitalization that's occurring. And it's a natural revitalization. It's a 
private uh, public partnership, and most of it's private. Most of it is natural development of businesses along the rail trail. So I think this is a huge opportunity to connect the towns and the seacoast in a way that uh, really promotes recreation, but it also promotes local business. And that, to me, is one of the most exciting. The last thing I'd say is that uh, I am happy, as you all know, to be a real partner in working with the state to make sure that this is not a liability for Hampton. You know, there's no guarantees, there's no promises. I've talked to the select board at Rye about this and they have some very specific concerns and they've only got 1,800, what is it, 1,800 feet of, of rail trail. Um, but these can be worked out and, and I think uh, moving forward with the assurance that um, any way that I can help be a uh, go-between and making sure that the impact is low. But I think the benefits to Hampton, Northampton, the reason why uh, Jim Majori from Northampton is so excited about this is the capacity to revitalize really along one, Route 1 and along Lafayette Road and the old rail bed. And I'm happy to take any questions. So before, before we, I, I, if anybody else wants to speak first, and then we'll take, we'll take the questions from the board. So is there anybody else that wants to? Just quickly, uh, hello, Tony Cholfi, resident. I just want to say, I think one reason we're on the agenda here for this group is, is that there is a, a, an assembled group of Hampton residents, you know, very serious about helping with the, the maintenance. And, you know, they, I have several groups of towns, and surfer friends I have, and school age kids friends I have, and just contacts that um, there's many people willing to help uh, maintain the, the trail, you know, as a volunteer basis, you know, to help the public works. So, I mean, that's one important part of this, and, you know, that's one reason why I'm here tonight, too. So, thank you very much. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you uh, for the chance to speak. I'm, I'm Jerry Klein. I'm a, uh, now the town moderator in Salisbury. I was a selectman for nine years, and, you know, I've been working on developing trails in our town. Uh, for 15 years, I think, a long time. Uh, and I think one of the big concerns that, you know, our selectmen had was what kind of a liability we're getting into, you know, and how much cost will this be. And uh, what we've done, and Salisbury is not a wealthy place, as you know, we've got a beach, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, it's a, it's a middle class town. And, uh, uh, and so you don't, you know, one thing as a selectman I did not want to do was to put a lot of burdens financially. Right. Uh, and so what we did, uh, what we have done, and we've done it now for more than 10 years, is we have uh, Coastal Trails uh, is a group that works both in, in Salisbury, Newburyport, Amesbury, and Newbury. Uh, and it's a nonprofit. And uh, we, with the town's permission, put up adopted trail signs and sold sponsorships, annual sponsorships, to businesses, okay? And we have 3.3 miles of trails. And um, on the most busiest part of the trail, uh, probably has four or 500 people a day use it, which is, you know, people love it, of course. Um, uh, they pay $250 a year. And on the less busy trail, it's $150 a year. And um, in the, I just I looked up in the records. Um, so that money comes into Coastal Trails, and then Coastal Trails ear, earmarks it for Salisbury. Uh, we do the same thing for Amesbury. We earmark it for Amesbury. And in the last three years, we've brought in an average of $5,900 into the Salisbury part of the uh, adopted trail program, and we've spent $2,800 a year. And right now we have a you know, surplus or a reserve of over $20,000. And twice a year we do uh, cleanup, spring and fall. There's a lot of cooperation with the DPW. Um, uh, well, first of all, all the mowing has been done by volunteers since over the last 10 years. No town hasn't mowed at all. Uh, we hire um, tree surgeons to clear dead trees if, that we can't cut down ourselves with the town's permission. We cut down, you know, people can take care of small trees. If the tree goes down, uh, they call us. If it's something we can do, we do it. If not, the town's 
town's probably cleared two trees in 10 years. Most of it is just done by, done by the volunteers. Uh, when brush grows along the trail, I've had every other year we have someone come and do a big brush cutting job and coastal trail space for it. Uh, we have a stone dust surface on one trail and that's been in place, we built it over from 2006 to 2012, but we've only had to go back and do any maintenance on it once. Uh, we, uh, National Grid put big trucks on it in the spring because there's a power line next to it and they did a lot of damage and you know, they wouldn't fix it, so we had to. Otherwise, it stays really well. So, you know, it has not been a burden on the town. And uh, you know, uh, um, well, one thing the town does, which is very nice, is that in the fall when we blow leaves off the trails, they lend us uh, backpack leaf blowers. We have some of our own too. Mm -hmm. And in the springtime, they have a big chipper. They, um, we have a Saturday morning when we work, get a big group of people. The chipper runs the trail. DPW guy is in charge and has a truck and a chipper and the people, the volunteers feed it and that cleans the trail up. So it really hasn't cost the town much of anything. You know, a little bit of time from people who are already hired uh, and, uh, you know, it works out very well. The coordination is important. You know, some towns, the towns have said, we're not going to do a darn thing and the volunteers have to do it all. I don't think that's good. Other times, the towns or the cities are doing it all and that's too burdensome. Yeah. So you, you, you can have a balance, and I think that's a good way to do it. So, thanks. All right, questions from the board, Mary Louise. Yes, oh, actually, uh, I, yes. I would like to grab you, and I have some questions. Oh, I have some, I wrote sure. up something on this too. Oh, aren't you nice, thank you. We, I'll pass them around yeah. if I may. Okay, very nice, I appreciate that. The land that is now the rail trail in Massachusetts, what what was the land? Uh, what uh, use was that land put to before you had the trail? Well, um, <clears throat> we have two rail lines in our town. One goes north south, which is the same line that you okay. the old right. Railroad. Right. And you know, it was abandoned. It's owned by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority in okay. Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah. And it was put to use mostly by ATVs tearing it up. Right. <laughs> and people doing bad things on it, okay? The east-west one, same thing. Uh, they were just abandoned. And um, when we started our trail program, um, people were really concerned because they, you know, imagining things happening. But, you know, what ha negative things happening. But what happened actually is that the ATV traffic has disappeared. And nighttime partying, trash, things like that have disappeared too because, you know, the, the good users essentially drive out the bad users. And so, that. But what, I assume that the railroad tracks were there at some point in yeah. time. Yeah. Who removed them? Who took charge? Uh, because I'm assuming they're gone. Um, the, well, we had two. The two trails in our town have been dealt with differently. The north-south one, um, we had the, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation built the trail for us. And, you know, we worked with them and we designed it with them. And the, the tracks were gone long since. Uh, it had been a two-track area and when, when one track still had ties in it. And that was removed as part of that project. And the so, state removed it. And the state, well. the state removed it as part of their project. The other one, um, tracks were long gone. Um, some ties were left. A good number of ties were left. And we had, as part of that, the area where tracks had, to, where ties had to be removed. We had a local contractor who essentially volunteered to clear them and dispose of them just as a donation. Okay. So the town didn't have to pay anything for that. We, and the north part, we're going to be coming, our trail now is 1.3 miles on the north-south section. We have another project that's going to be starting in the spring that's going to be coming all the way to Seabrook. Okay. And there, uh, tracks have been removed, there's lots of ties, but that's another mass DOT project and they will remove the ties as part of that. 
I have a couple of questions for, for Senator Sherman, if I may. I would like to thank Mr. Klima for coming. I've seen your uh, political signs through the years. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Salisbury is a wonderful town. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> coming. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, has, uh, who owns the rail trail, the potential rail trail in Hampton now? It, currently it's owned, as I understand, by and Pan and Pan Am. So the state hasn't even purchased it yet. That would be correct. So the state's making all these plans, but they don't own the property. No, the, these are contingent on, right, sorry, these are contingent plans. They could, the state could purchase that this year or next year or 20 years from now. Well, we're hoping it's not 20 well, years from now. Right. That, um, when you were here with the other representatives uh, who uh, take care of us in Concord, uh, I had a copy and I gave you my copy, which I have sort of regretted because I, that's the one thing missing in my book. I can get it but back to you. I uh, read out the list of contaminants, and the reason I gave you that in your other um, iteration as a doctor, I was really concerned about that, and I was quite furious, I have to admit, when I saw all the contamination along right. those tracks, and wondering what, what's going to happen, and how that's going to be removed or over, I'm not sure, but I have a serious concern about that. Right. And, and I would think you would too. <laughs> well, I do, but on two levels. One is whether or not the rail trail, you know, we, we have the same concern up in Greenland, which is where the rail trail goes right next to Coakley. Uh, also in Rye, where it goes right next to Barry's Brook, which, as you yeah. know. So some of the contaminants are within the rail trail itself. Um, and in fact, that's true of virtually every rail bed in in the country, but also in the state of New Hampshire. And then the second is um, where it specifically abuts or goes next to Cocoa Landfill and just, mm -hmm. just north of that. So that's a, that's a great concern. It's an important concern. I don't think it's necessarily connected to the rail trail because the contaminants have to be cleaned up whether or not the rail trail is addressed. And, one, whether or not the rail trail goes forward, because those contaminants, as you know, will leach into groundwater, as we've seen elsewhere in the state, and as we've seen within our district. The contaminants can migrate, obviously, yep. but we're sitting here with the state of New Hampshire, who obviously is not excited about uh, cleaning up, and of course they don't own the property yet, so the contamination is still sitting there. Correct, and I'm happy to work with DES to get an answer. One way or the other, for the sake of this town of Hampton, uh, known contamination needs to be uh, remediated. Well, they printed it right in the sheet. Correct. That I, gave you. I agree. And so the issue isn't. What I'm getting at is that it it is not contingent on. And this is true across the state, and this is something that we're working on. But contamination, wherever it is, that is a threat to human health, needs to be cleaned up. That's one of the things that I've been working on since I started, but it, uh, I've only started about a month and a half ago, so <laughs> it's a work in progress. Um, but I think the, the bottom line is that, as you're saying, that part of the cleanup that prepares the rail trail is going to have to include contamination cleanup. That is, in my book, not the responsibility of the town of Hampton. It's the responsibility of either Pan Am or the state if it purchases it. And another concern is parking. Now, this goes right through the center of basically of downtown Hampton. Mm -hmm. We have a small town parking lot. If we have hordes of people coming in, which would be very nice, where are they going to park? Well, remember, many of the hordes of people mm -hmm. are coming in by bike. Well, and that's right. And so the majority of, I agree that there needs to be consideration given somewhere or at points along the rail trail for parking. And perhaps you can answer that question a little bit better. But 
One of the things that we're finding, especially in cities, is that, uh, but also places like the 93 corridor, is that the next generation is not necessarily buying cars. In fact, many of them are not even getting driver's licenses. They're anticipating public transportation. I would also remind you of one other thing that's really quite amazing. If you've never had the opportunity to go to what used to be West Side Highway when I was a kid, and um, also in Chicago, some of these old rails that have been turned into elevated walkways. Mm -hmm. Just walk along those and see the experience. It's, it's a, it itself is, um, is a social experience. And what we've seen, my, my uh, sister-in-law actually works in concrete, very high level concrete, and she's done all the benches in Chicago. And that it is, and they're also doing projects along the New York um, uh, elevated greenway. These are places that the parking is not so much the issue because so many people are coming into that on foot or on bike or on other modes of transportation. Not like the border crossing in Mexico. <laughs> I'm not Sorry. going there. That's, <laughs> that's federal, right? I'm not trying to be mean to you. No, I, I understand. You, you have a, a big burden on you from uh, now it's in a, your new position uh, representing us. I but I would make one observation as a selectman in Hampton, mm -hmm. as far as the state is concerned. I call to mind the old saying of, he who sups with the devil must use a long spoon. Gina. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator, thank you for coming tonight. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. And I also appreciated what you said earlier about how, yeah, I am concerned about some of this stuff getting pawned up on the town of Hampton. Right. First of all, I support this project, okay? I ride my bicycle every day in this town. It's an awful town to ride a bicycle in, weather permitting, <laughs> of course, okay? And I think that this definitely would be asset, and I would love to see it happen as fast as I could. But at the same time, Friday afternoon, we received a uh, memorandum. It went to the town manager, the assistant town manager, and the board of selectmen. And it's from both our deputy and our a deputy and our director of public works. And Jen Hill is actually here right now. And I would like um, I would like to hear from her, if that's okay, while you're here. Jen, do you mind coming up? Can we, the rest of us, ask questions yeah. of the senator first, please? Yeah. Oh, oh, so. All right. No, just so we can have, if anybody's got any questions, so before Jen can okay. All right. Go ahead, Rick. Did you have a question? Go ahead, no, let's go. Um, I just wanted to say, in case it, it, anyone here is not aware of it, um, and I'm not sure if this didn't predate when um, you were here, Mr. Welch, but there was a time, I'm sure you remember, Rusty, where there was a big problem with homeless people living on the, mm -hmm. on the rail trail. Yeah. And uh, there were some very sad cases, people that would be kicked out of their house by their parents that didn't care, were living on the, um, I knew the lady that lived in the house would have been right on Exeter Road that borders it. And it was a very sad case. Mm -hmm. And I think something like this will actually stop, you know, discourage people that are homeless from <laughs> take, you know, making that a space where they would use, with having all, lots of people going by. Um, you know, so that's something that went on for years and was a problem in Hampton. It sounds like the experience in Salisbury yeah. is that, you know, once you clean something up and start using it on a regular basis, it does seem to keep it itself. So, you know, I also am in favor of this. So. Are we just doing questions for the center? Or? Yeah. Well, him or, I can I, sit or anybody, so. Yeah, well, I agree with one thing you said, is that, is that the, the pollutants there are separate from the rail trail. I mean, they got to be cleaned right. up anyway, so that's an issue that has to be dealt with. And we can't really equate that with the rail trail. That, that's kind of foolish. Um, and I, I want to thank you for your support on this. And for everybody's support, I want to thank you. It's really good. And it, it's a really positive thing. I know I lived in Western Massachusetts for a long time. There are a lot of rail trails used frequently. I know uh, my wife used to take my granddaughter down to uh, Newburyport to ride on the rail trail, and it was a shame she had to go from Hampton to Newburyport to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really something we need. And uh, I'll throw in my two cents while we're here. Um, 
you know, I, in November, I was over to the airport cafe. It was a cold, rainy, damp day. <laughs> and there was a gentleman there on a bicycle. And so the place was pretty full, and he was sitting at a table, so I sat down with him and talked to him. He'd come over from Newburyport, and he wanted to try the, the rail trail in Hampton. <laughs> he had heard about it and heard the potential of it, and he had rode his bike over in the, in the rain. <laughs> I was pretty amazed at that anyways, but, you know, he, he had said he wanted to hear it, and he, he said, that part I liked about it. And I, he said, I can see the potential here. But I, I, live, I also have another piece of property down in Florida, uh, right next to the Pinellas County rail trail down there. Great trail. They've taken a lot of the old bridges. It goes up over. They have uh, crosswalks. When it crosses the highway, they have lit signs. Uh, I can see the value of it. And, and how many people that use that trail is unbelievable. And, I, and I've seen them around here. So I think, it was, I think part of the biggest concern for, for Hampton was in the amount of railroad ties that were out there. Mm, and, yeah. and the creosote, and yep. we all know the years. Arsenic. What they used to, you know. But I, I believe we've been assured that the state is going to pick them up and <laughs> remove them. So I think that's part of what, that was one of our big concerns of what we do with them. If, so, if I could add one more very quickly, and that's public safety. Um, you know, in the, in the time I've lived in Rye, there have been numerous car against bike accidents uh, to say nothing about pedestrians being struck. We have in Rye, and, and I, having spent a lot of time in Hampton this summer, um, you do have, you have more sidewalks, I think, in Hampton than the entire seacoast combined. But still, you have a number of roads that are just not user-friendly unless you're in a car. And this would really open that opportunity, especially for people with strollers and, and others. So um, I agree with you, and I appreciate your supporting this. Um, and again, I'm committed to working uh, with DES. As you know, that's a huge priority of me is public safety on the contamination side, not just with Coakley, but all along the seacoast. All right. Are there any other questions for any of the uh, people here from the Seacoast Greenway, from the board? Um, well, actually, I want to add something. Okay, so do we ask, have, I'll ask Jen, whoever, sorry about maybe that. Seth, whoever wants to answer. Um, so, Rusty, you mentioned about the ties. Mm -hmm. I spent some time down in Public Works today because I didn't receive uh, the memo from them until Friday. And this is... This is the, all the land that I guess hasn't been purchased by the state. And if everyone here tonight can tell me that this is all going to be cleaned up once it's purchased by someone other than Hampton, the town of Hampton, then I will be definitely much more likely to uh, sign off on this tonight. But I would like to have the deputy director come up and explain. Now, luckily, we have a town manager that appears like he might have come up with something that could satisfy a lot of the worries that I know at least I have as a selectman to the entire town of Hampton yep. as to what this could potentially, like everyone stated tonight, and I appreciate the, Jerry from uh, Salisbury, I really appreciate you coming, thank you very much. That, uh, that means a lot, you shared your experience and that helps a lot. But this is, as you can see, just not nitpicking of to why this has gone on for so long and why we were so worried about it. That's like 4,000 ties, I think. 4,200. Uh, 4,200 ties, and obviously yeah. it's a mess as is expected. Yeah. And I understand that tonight you're looking for a consent so that the state can go and continue to attempt to purchase this as soon as possible. Is that huh. what I'm understanding? I'll touch on that quickly. Um, December 11th, we were at a meeting in Portsmouth with all the town managers uh, from Seabrook to Portsmouth, uh, as well as some of the DPW uh, and town employees. Um, Victoria Sheehan, um, Sheehan, sorry, mm -hmm. Sheehan, uh, she indicated that uh, they're in a verbal agreement to purchase the right of way, uh, as well as um, uh, they're ready to increase the budget to, um, to complete the construction. Uh, they also committed to removing uh, the ties as well. So 
Um, we've, we've gotten that verbal commitment from uh, the commissioner herself. Um, okay. So we're, we're we, and this project, I mean, when it's all said and done, we're probably looking at seven plus million dollars of, oh, yes. of uh, congestion mitigation air quality funding, which is a federal, federal source that we're using. So um, again, we're just looking to, at the local level to, to provide the routine maintenance. Mm. Uh, and, and one of the things, you know, a lot of answers will come after the acquisition is complete, but, you know, it, you can't put the, what's, it, what's the expression, the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. the horse before the cart. Uh, you can't go into design and construction phase before you own the property. So they've, they've kind of, you know, held off on actually coming up with exactly what it's going to look like and right. all that. But, you know, we've gotten these commitments that it will be part of the plan and part of the bidding process mm -hmm. uh, to remove the rails. So... All right, well, I'd like to ask one more thing for you to hear, if you don't mind. Deputy Haley, do you mind coming up? Good evening, Jen. Good evening, everyone. Um, the letter or memo that Regina is referring to is something that our department had put together. Um, and I think it's really important for everyone to understand that we do not have a position against the rail trail. We're simply looking at how it would or could impact our department mm -hmm. so that everything is on the table. Um, and as you mentioned, there are many times uh, volunteer groups that can take on uh, much of the maintenance from pruning, trimming, litter, uh, cleanup, all these other things. And I myself did a lot of research just going, okay, what are these costs? And uh, they can be low as $600 a mile. You know, you're talking $300 to $1,800. Bucks. Or it could be something much more significant depending on what you have to maintain. Um, we have some concerns as it relates to the drainage along the rail trail. Uh, we have some concerns related to the railroad ties. But most specifically, I went through the agreement uh, that DOT had put forth in doing an agreement similar for each town. And they were very specific. They called out the maintenance items. Mm -hmm. um, these are the items that are gonna be there um, in that we're looking at as a department and how it affects uh, what we can or cannot do. Um, in this memo, all we're asking is that these things be considered, not to hold up any type of purchase and sales, but that we continue in good faith and in good transparency talking about them. Um, one of the things that we had heard, and again, we're hearing things from one side and hearing from another, well, yes, it says right in the agreement, and I'm gonna end, they're gonna remove the railroad ties. Does that mean to large piles next to the rail trail? Or does that mean from the right of way so that we're not left with um, one, the creosote ties and those things and any of the environmental that could happen from it. But like you said, you know, there's gonna be a level of responsibility for who's responsible for that removal. We just wanna make sure that we're protecting Hampton and, and it's not us. Um, there is a lot of rail still there. That is actually not written, but now I've heard tonight you guys have talked about that. But not just who's removing the ties, but who's removing the rail uh, that would be in the way, because there is a significant uh, cost to that. When we're looking at the future and we're looking at maintenance, we're looking at what we deal with every day, um, especially this time of year, and it's our competing priorities. You know, we're sitting here and we're going before voters on Saturday asking for them to support projects A through Z. Uh, based on priorities that we started with last September that range from drainage projects to roadway projects and we're all doing the sewer force main project uh, down on Church Street and if there was funding that was needed because what happens if a volunteer group can't completely fund maybe have to do extra herbicide treatments because the place I just got out of control or something invasive or um, you know, when it's time for us to do the stone dust relay, if they go with the stone dust path, at three miles long, that could be $28,000. That may not be a volunteer group level. So how do we make sure or assure that there is some level of funding uh, when we're looking at priorities? Not that we can't, just that they we're all thinking about it. So this is what was in that memo. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the trail surfacing, which I just touched on, the weed and brush control. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's gonna take some of our department's time if the volunteers are not there to go down and make sure that we don't have trees across tracks, uh, off trail, excuse me, that we don't have branches that have grown out that uh, could potentially, you know, someone in the eye when they're walking by, you know, things that you don't want 
uh, happening, but is limited. It can be worked out. We're just requesting that we're continuing to think about those things. Um, the drainage ditches, as you know, uh, the railroad bed often tends to be the what bifurcates two sections of towns. Well, it certainly does in Hampton. You've got the drainage from one side that comes down to the low part, you know, coming from Lafayette, and then you've got the rest coming from the other side. That drainage has to go somewhere. So while we aren't done with the full design because they haven't come under contract and purchased right away, we get anxious about that because that's everything we deal with in town from an infrastructure standpoint. We want to make sure we're going to be able to maintain it. <coughs> with the MS4 that's coming in, if we have infrastructure, we are going to be held to a level to make sure that we're meeting MS4 requirements. We believe that if the state has infrastructure, they take responsibility for theirs. And it's only because there's only so much we can do. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And it's not to pinpoint and it's not to ours and theirs. It's to be clear and to know who's responsible yeah. uh, moving forward. Uh, with the culverts, that goes along with the ditches. You clean the ditch, you clean the culvert, you make sure if we've got a large storm, the culverts aren't blocked. It's just routine stuff that we'll have to do. We do it throughout town. But when I say we'll, we'll as a community. You know, it's, if there's been a storm, maybe the volunteer group gets together, let's go check the culverts. It's not something you have to do every day. Um, even our roads, if complaints or concerns come in by phone call, they come in, you know, and you respond to them, you go out, you investigate. Um, graffiti, it happens, uh, you know, it happens everywhere and all over. Again, something that can be worked out. Uh, it just means that we'll need to do some routine inspections, but then there is a level of what happens with enforcement. Just, again, don't want to lose sight of it. You know, much like our roadways or our dark parks or the skate park or whatever, you know, will PD have a foot traffic for patrol? Will there be? These are things that we need to discuss. How, how do we make sure that this maintains a safe environment? Uh, trail signage. I was a big proponent for let's put up some advertising, charge for it, and then we get to keep whatever we have and that becomes our maintenance thing. But there are stuff in the agreement uh, that clearly states that it's a portion. Um, I'd love to work on that. I'd love to, you know, if we had gurus in the whole marketing world and the Hampton part was class, you know, classy done as far as marketing and advertising for some of our local businesses or further away businesses and we generated some funding, what a better way to support the rail trail than to have its own funding source. So again, I'm calling it out for things to think of as we're going through uh, the contract. Uh, so in general, when I started this, you know, we're talking three miles or so in Hampton. Um, when I'm looking at the costs, mm -hmm. yep. it could be as little as what it, you know. I have here, you know, 6,600. I was doing about an average of 2,200 a mile, uh, based on everything of the lists that we would be responsible for, up to about 24,000 a year. But not every year. Those years you have to resurface. You know, you don't resurface every year. Things have a shelf life, just like drainage. Mm -hmm. You put it in, you hopefully get 20 years. You put in the path, you hopefully get five years. These aren't every year reoccurring costs. So I thought it was very important that as we're talking about this and as we sit here and go, we are not against it. We just want everybody to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. And I have gone through um, the agreement and made small comments. And you know, as long as we're paralleling these, there, there is, we do not see an issue as long as we continue to address some of the larger concerns. Good. Okay, so I just want to say on that, so the town, town manager Welch prepared a recommendation for us that is, recommends the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the rail trail agreement with the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation dated December 20, 2018, with the attached letter of concern, which is addressed to uh, Commissioner Shaheen, Shaheen, to be appended to the agreement and to become part of the agreement with such agreement and letter to be forwarded to the Department of Transportation. This letter concerns certain subjects of concern to the town of Hampton, which is what Ms. Hale has just explained to you, and is also part of this document, which that attachment will go to the commissioner as well? If you approve it. Okay. You have so, to approve it. Right. Have so, recommendation. Well, that's what <clears throat> I'm explaining to them right now. So I would be, uh, I would be willing to make that recommendation. 
as a motion. Aren't we doing that? Don't we have uh, it on as old business? Yeah, we do. We do. I think that we should talk about it then. I mean, look. We, we have everybody here right now. I mean, we can do it then. Uh, or unless there's any objection, Mary Louise. Yes, I, I think this is premature. I think we need to wait until we have confirmation that the state of New Hampshire has purchased and legally owns that property. But they can't do that until they get the, they get the opinion that we are going to be willing to do it. They're not going to purchase it if we're not willing to do it. Isn't that right? I, I can, it's a bit of a chicken and an egg. Um, the funding source that they're using, congestion mitigation, air quality, requires that a trail be installed um, no matter what once they acquire the property, if they use that funding source. So if they were to acquire the property, then they can't come back and not do the Hampton portion if Hampton doesn't agree to do the routine maintenance. So they need the commitment from each town to say that they're gonna do the routine maintenance so that they can go ahead, acquire the property, and then federally they'll be required to install the trail. They've got a lot more than routine maintenance to worry about. They've got a lot, the it, town, the state, theoretically, there, is going to be investing a huge amount of money in this property. There, there's there's uh, over 10 towns uh, in this state that already have uh, yeah. similar trail agreements with the state. Uh, they've built trail, Salem, Derry, And the Laconia, state owns that property? And the state owns the property. So they're very, they're very well aware of uh, some of the issues that come along property. with these. Uh, yeah. What's that? It does not own this property yet. Well, it, it does own from Drake Side South currently, but that's not part of the project. And I'd like to thank Fred for that. But um, he, he has come up with many good recommendations for this trail agreement. Yeah. And a lot of them have been accepted. Um, not all of them, but we got pretty yeah. close. Uh, but the one thing we're only talking from Drake side north to port uh, right. Drake side north Foss, to the north from Foss north. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, It's right. only 1.2 miles at this point. So that should help lower the maintenance costs as well It's just I'm a little leery of, of not of doing something or agreeing to something before the actual property Jim. is locked oh. in Jim if we're going to do it now, I, I, I hereby move to approve the rail trail agreement with the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation is updated on December 24th, 2018 with the letter of concern dated tw January 28th, 2019 attached and to authorize Chairman Bridal to sign both the agreement and the letter of concern on behalf of the board. And I'll second it. I didn't get a copy of the agreement, but I think I understand it. Yep. Any discussion on the motion? Make sure, uh, Mr. Chairman, the letter uh, of January 28th is for your signature, and it would have attached to it the memo that was just referenced by the, uh, yeah. yeah. So we have a motion and a second. No other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Four to one, motion passes. Seth, I believe that I emailed you and offered you the book that I have with all of the memos in it, if you guys want it. I don't it. knock out, but I would like that. Oh, okay. I sent a memo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can save it. Everything I got. Not as big as the Appy. <laughs> <laughs> I have the book on the Appy. Is that done for me? It's a great trail. I mean, it's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, getting back with my. Getting back to Sandy. Yep. We're back to uh, Christine. Yes. Christine. Christine. Christy, how are you? <laughs> We're Christy. Uh, thank you, Christy. I got one. We all got them. Yeah. 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 All right. Well. It's a good thing. Oh, somebody will be looking for them. Get it all down yourself. No, yeah. we did. Okay. Not a big deal. Okay. So I assume we'll start with the monthly financials for December. Okay. Sure. For you guys. Yeah. So those went out this morning. They are on the website. Sent to the budget committee. 
Um, I'm calling it first pass at December, but um, like I was telling Fred today, I think we're in a pretty good place and this is a pretty good reflection. We do already have some other bills that did come in the mail for like utilities today. So the numbers have already changed slightly, but um, I'll run through this for you. It's the final report for 2018. Prior to the audit, everything always changes once the auditors are here too, but this is our first take at it. Uh, the revenue <laughs> for 2017 to 18, the revenue is higher by $132,663. The month's total income was $1,555,586. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $346,841. Interest on taxes came in at $15,315. Building permits at $15,887. It's a total for the year for building permits it ended up being $275,430. Rooms and meals tax always comes in December. It was $775,469. The state water pollution grant at $20,742. Departmental income at $81,403. Rice sewer agreement at $30,752. Interest on deposits at $12,161. Other trust um, at $20,854 and the real estate trust <coughs> at $24,747. On the expense side of things, you'll see that we are under target by $442,491 or 1.79%. Um, that's how we've been reporting it all year without debt. I think it's important to note now that the year's over there when all our debt has been paid, we're actually under uh, budget by $441,931 or 1.62%. I'll run through each of the departments where they ended the year as a percentage. Board of Selectmen at 104.5, Town Manager at 101.74%, Budget Committee at 52.32%, Trustees of the Trust Funds at 19%, Election Registration and Vital Statistics at 93.35%, Finance at 93.7%, Audit at 79.67%, Assessing at 74.36%, the Tax Collector at 97.66%, Management Information Systems at 85.07%, Legal at 137.98%, Personnel Administration at 93.83%, Planning at 95.13%, Zoning at 120.03%, General Government Buildings at 96.53%, Cemetery at 95.17%, Municipal Insurance at 98%, Parking Administration at 125.91%, and General Government as a whole was at 96.06%. Uh, the Police Department with their open purchase orders is at 98.79%. The fire department with open purchase orders is at 97.75%. Building department is at 89.54%. Emergency management is at 185.46%. <laughs> Other safety services is at 104.62%. And street lighting is at 111.52%. Public works department with their open purchase orders is at 101.13%. Animal control is at 90.81%. Mosquito control is at 96.66%. Welfare is at 83.25%. Parks and Recreation is at 95.98%. The Library is at 98.86%. And um, this will be 100% special because we have to return whatever is left in their budget. Patriotic Purposes is at 88.13%. Other Flower Gardens is at 26.46%. And the Conservation is at 98.09%. Once again, they'll be at 100%, so we'll to transfer the money. Municipal debt is at 100.02%. And then um, when you look at the other funds, other than the general fund, Fund 24 for Recreation has a balance of $201,990, with beach sticker donations of $22,196 and $13,829 being awarded in scholarships. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has $371,120. Fund 26 for private detail has 226,819. 
Fund 27 for EMS has a balance of 331,170. In the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018 total $49,978 with a balance in this account of 180980 And fees collected to date totaling $424,405. So that is where we um, were as of this morning. Like I said, we have other expenditures that have already come in today. And then when we give back to the... Um, library and the conservation what they had left in theirs it brings us down to uh, four hundred twenty four thousand eight hundred and fifty six dollars and then I just wanted to point out also on here um, if the board wishes at the end of the year to transfer money from the employee separation line and the big buyback line it would bring us down to about three hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred and fifty eight so still uh, we would still be in a decent spot pending that I do expect a few more bills, but I think, like I was telling Fred earlier, I think we have uh, done a good job of capturing the majority of the utilities, and at this point I think it would be a, a big surprise if something large was to come in. Um, I think we've done it. The departments have worked hard, and my accounts payable uh, individual in my department has worked hard to kind of capture all the bills and get them in as fast as we could this year. Questions from the board, Mary Louise. Yeah, very nicely done. Um, I'm looking at the rooms and meals tax revenue from the state, uh, 775, 469, well, actually a little more, 780, 664 um, for last year. Um, it's still low considering what we put into the Beach, but at least it's revenue and the highway subsidy. I assume that's the one where that's our annual state highway grant, Fred, that we yes. pair up. Yeah. yeah, and then the state water pollution control, um, 162,600. So, first thing I look at is for revenue from the state. Thank you, Christy. Regina. Yes, I have a couple of uh, similar observations to make. On the revenue side, I want to bring up under parking tickets, we've increased that by 198%, it looks like, mm. about, according to the financials, oh, almost $32,000. And on the parking lot revenues, including the 20% payable back to the town parks, we've increased our revenue by a little over $8,200. I already brought up the uh, income that we receive on an annual basis, which you've already made the adjustment for that. So between the cemetery fund and the real estate trust income, it's about almost $871,000, correct? Mm -hmm. And then on the expense side of things, awesome, I mean, budget-wise, Christy, you did an awesome job as usual. Yeah. Um, a couple things I noticed, I was so waiting for the year-end financials to be ready. I know there's still, it could be changing, right. probably nothing too material. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, we're doing pretty good in my in my view. Election administration, I mean, we've only spent 60% of that, and we had actually three elections this year. Mm -hmm. So that is really good. A um, couple things that are a little bit high, as you already pointed out, the legal expenses. Um, parking page five. I'm not sure what that one is. Oh, parking administration. Obviously, that's gone up because we... We've uh, hired some people to, mm -hmm. you know, it, to monitor the parking from the police department, which is one of the reasons why we've also increased our parking tickets by $32,000. So that needs to be considered. Um, another increase I noticed is, like I've mentioned several times, are the support services that fall into the police department budget. That's at 100, almost 110% at $870,000. So that just about wipes out our trust fund income and uh, that is mostly occurs during July, August and September, the uh, majority of that money. And then I have transportation on page 13. Oh, actually landfill operations, which I see we just had another uh, uh, testing, you know, the town manager is proactively testing for the PFAS, which I know mm -hmm. Senator Sherman is uh, definitely on top of, and we're testing that in our own landfill. 
So I know those operational costs have gone up, but I think it's very important. It's at 307% at year end. But still, somehow, Public Works managed to pretty much have their budget right in line. Great, they <laughs> up at like so they do a really good job. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to point out is the uh, waste tipping fees and the waste hauling fees that are at 112% this year. And from what I'm seeing happening, it's probably going to go up for us next year. Because, Six to eight percent. Yeah. So that's just another thing I wanted to point out. And thank you for the uh, capital outlay where all the warrant articles stand. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, good job uh, on, the, on, the, on the report. And a good job by the uh, department heads and the, the, the town manager, the system town manager, and yourself, you know, keeping a good eye on this budget all year long. <coughs> when we were a little bit of trouble, we thought, in November. You know, you put the kibosh on yeah. things, and you really did a good job of making sure that we came out of here in the green, which is really important. So yes. you did a good job, all of you. Thank you. Rick? Your report's very impressive. Thank you. You kept us in the black, so that's, that wasn't what we thought three or four months ago. Right. So. How did you get it not to snow too much? <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> My kids have a trick. You put like a ice cube in the toilet and a <laughs> spoon under your pillow or something. I don't know. Wear your pajamas inside out. There's all kinds of things you can do. <laughs> um, and then I did provide this to you, and I believe Fred, they need to take a vote on this to carry forward the Warren Articles from 18. So that basically what this is, I bring it to you guys every year. Fred and I have gone through um, the purchase order list, which was something we had done in November to help bring us back into the black and out of the red, cleaned up a lot of the purchase orders. And we've gone through to see which Warren articles have been expended and which ones expired, because some of them did expire as of March 31st of 2018. And so we're requesting that um, you guys vote to bring forward the purchase orders and the outstanding purchase orders, which totaled 469307 but only 320484 is from the general fund. The rest are from... Um, Fund 26, 31, and 33 on your sheets there. And just so you know, you haven't seen Fund 31 and 33 yet. Those are the some of the larger projects that have been passed in 18. So Fund 31 will be for the Lafayette Road sewer project. And it's labeled on your sheet there. And Fund 33 is for the Church Street Force Main. So those are the larger amounts mm -hmm. in the purchase orders there. And then I've listed out, I won't read them. Um, I think people get bored hearing all the numbers, but the Warren articles are all listed there. And like I said, Fred and I have combed through them to make sure that we're only bringing forward projects that are still open and uh, pending. And those total $852,586. And then on the very bottom of this sheet, um, we're showing you the uh, warrant articles that have expired or the projects are complete and the amount of money that will be going back to the um, unassigned fund balance and that totals $368,336. So kind of just gives you a summary of, of where we're ending for purchase orders and warrant articles. I'll make that motion. A second. Oh, okay. Any questions? I, I just, we probably should state that the motion is to approve the analysis of open purchase orders and warrant articles for the year ending 12-31-18. And maybe reference the date too, because auditors do check to make sure that um, mm -hmm. you guys have made a motion and approved this. So, so if you want to reference the date of 128-19, okay. that would probably be good. And I'd like to say one thing too. I've got, you've attached all the detail for all the Correct. open purchase Correct. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. The purchase order list so. is attached to that, so you guys could see um, where that's they great. all are coming from, what departments and stuff. I just and figured we, we need to deal yeah, with no, that. Yeah, that's fine. Minutes. Motion. So motion to made and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Mr. Thank Chairman, you, we'd, uh, we'd ask that you, uh, you apply to the uh, reserve account uh, <clears throat> the balance of the employee separation and buyback program, which would be a little under $110,000, a bit it's like 98000 It's 107898 okay. Um, that can go to the compensated absence. Do you need a separate motion for that? Yes, we have, sir. And I'll make that motion. Okay, motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, great. We will take care of that. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you. I'll get it in the morning. Okay. Thank you. Huh. <laughs> now the town manager's report. Didn't think we'd make it here.
We've been waiting all meeting for this. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, progress continues on installing the new sewer force main on Church Street. Uh, as you probably noticed, you go bouncing through the area at the current time because we haven't had an opportunity to uh, get in there and clean it up and pave it. But weather has not exactly been with us to do that. So mm -hmm. we'll be working on that shortly. We had a person come in and talk about that. We did. Make sure that we. Uh, this past week, uh, the contractor successfully placed the line under the main water line, actually two main water lines wow. coming from the water tower. Uh, he also, they also placed the line in the area under the main gas line that's located in that general area. Uh, so, and they've continued into the pumping station and they'll continue to work as needed. Now, Church Street will have off and on detours on it until we get the thing completed somewhat completed for the remainder of the year until we can get back to repaving later on. The water department is planning on digging up the street too. Oh, good. Because they're going to lay a new water main from Bechtel Way down the other side of Route 101 all the way to uh, Church Street, down, and down, down Church Street on the south side. My so goodness. we've got a lot of work le left there to do and see a lot of work that's going to go on. Uh, Deliver session is Saturday, yep. February 2nd, 2019. Uh, everybody should be there. Warrant articles are up online on the, uh, on the town website. There are copies available upstairs uh, in the, the main lobby. Um, please uh, come to the delivery session. We need your vote, your time, your thoughts, mm -hmm. your consideration of things that are going on. It starts at 8.30 a.m. at the Winnicott High School. So we'd appreciate a big attendance and lots of folks to come and see what's going on with their community. Uh, work continues on snow and ice conditions after the last storm. We want to thank those who uh, removed their trash and recycling carts from the streets that aided in plowing, and those who removed their vehicles in order for the plowing to uh, plows to clear the streets. That was very helpful. I had done a survey at about four o'clock in the morning several days before that storm and we had 38 cars and trucks parked on the road all night long that weren't supposed to be there. So thank you for moving them, because otherwise you may still be there stuck in ice. Um, there is a meeting coming uh, this Wednesday, January 30th, 2019. It's going to be at 7 p.m. at the Seabrook Community Center, and it's gonna be an informational meeting describing the process that's been ongoing for the new bridge in the harbor on Route 1A. That's very important. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are a number of bills up in Concord. <laughs> I know our Learned Council has been requested to, uh, to go up and testify on some of those bills. And uh, I think he's, yes, he's still here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't departed us quite yet. Uh, he's been requested, I'll let him uh, talk about this. Representative Edgar has, has requested he go up and testify on House 461. Uh, and I'll let him explain what he would like to do in doing that. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, last week there was a bill that was presented, uh, a new bill that had to do with the uh, addition of a parking fee uh, on top of the meters, uh, not taking away from uh, parks and natural resources, but adding to what is charged uh, to come back not just to Hampton but to any town uh, wherein there are parking meters as a way to uh, help assist towns in, in the expenses that they incur by hosting uh, park facilities. Um, the committee that was the transportation committee and uh, received a, a, a good reception and is still under study. Uh, tomorrow there is yet another bill sponsored by Representative Edgar uh, which attempts to uh, assist towns that host uh, tourism. This one would add a $2 per occupancy uh, per room charge on if, uh, if, it is, uh, if a town adopts it. Uh, this legislation is simply to give towns the authority to adopt a charge like that up to two dollars. First, we need the authority to even adopt such a thing. And so this is enabling legislation to do that. Um, the revenues 
if, if the town were to adopt it at a future town meeting under a Warren article, could be deposited in a, a reserve type fund or revolving fund to be expended um, for capital improvements uh, or tourism support funds. And so, um, again, this is an effort to assist local communities that have that particular burden. And so Representative Edgar was uh, understanding that there may be amendments to such a bill because it's uh, been attempted before, uh, would like to have some uh, support <coughs> from, uh, from you. And so I would not want to appear without the board's authority to do that. A uh, quick question, Mark, on the parking fees. So when the, this relates to the state parking meters yes. at the state park? That was the, the bill last week. Right, and the state would have to give the town 2% of the revenues that they take in from their parking meters? Um, it was 25 cents per hour on top of what the current oh. charge is. But the That's state how would, that worked. The state would really know <clears throat> how to calculate it. <laughs> well, the, actually, believe it or not, the study that I've done uh, up at the uh, Department of Resources, pursuant to our right to no law request, mm -hmm. we spent about 12 days up there. The state has that down to a science. They can tell you what they're collecting and where uh, by the hour. So we will, we will have the opportunity to get our cut, as it were. Well, they certainly have the technology in place. Yeah, By but I point. they have the technology in place for okay. that particular. You're looking for a motion for if, that? If, for this other bill, yes. For the other bill, so he can go up and testify. The one that right. I'll make that motion. I need I need discussion. Okay, well, let's have. I'll second it. We have discussion. a motion second. Now you can discuss it. All right. So HB 492. That's the one that I believe our state rep Bushway present. She was the main sponsor on this, and that's, that's to add additional money so that the parking meetings will be more and we can keep the extra the 25 cents per hour yes okay. that's correct because we're talking about two bills at one time right. so i just want to make sure because the other day which i think is a good bill but we also received a memo now from uh our guys over at department of natural and cultural resources saying that they oppose this bill. Oh, yes. So that, that, that's, that's going to be a conflict. That was the same bill that right. you just talked that about. That was their testimony that they gave right. at the... Right. And so. the committee has great interest in exploring the idea um, in the House because they think it has merit. Okay. So they are, they are going to do a study group. And when's that... And is Mark going to need to be involved in that? Well, I'll be involved in it, I think. I went up and testified. They want me to be involved in it. They want Mark to be involved in it. The Senator Stiles testified on it. I'm assuming they're going to ask her for some questions as well So, uh, as, they, as they go along. But they'd like to study the idea because they feel that there may be some merit to it. Okay, well, that's frisky up there. I think there's some merit to it, too. <laughs> as far as the it's other bill is concerned, it concerns me that, you know, I've put it out there to some business owners around here, and they're not all comfortable with it. So I won't be able to support you going up there but I appreciate it if the board decides to do that the the second bill adding a, two dollars a, a two dollars yeah I mean I'm not I don't know if I'm in favor of that because I don't That's know if, if, if business owners are in favor but I'm in favor of home rule so I'm in favor that of too. anything that passes that we have the opportunity right. to either accept or reject rather right. than have Concord mm -hmm. tell us exactly what we have to accept and reject so from the aspect of that we can then have that, if they, if they pass that, we then can go to the business owners in Hampton and talk about it and mm -hmm. work on it and say, is this something that Hampton is good for Hampton? So I'm in favor because of the fact that it the gives home us, rule. home rule, it gives us the ability to make our own rules. Yeah, we have the option. Options. Yeah. So with that being said, we have a motion and a second to allow him to go to speak. With the understanding that that's what we're looking for is the home rule yeah. aspect mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So all those in favor? Four opposed? Four to one. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mark. A few other things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the good side of the ledger: uh, we are in the process of receiving a check for sixty-four thousand six hundred and fifty-seven dollars and seventy-one cents from FEMA. 
for the January floods a year ago. Ah. And we understand that there is another check potentially in the wind for close to $100,000 as a portion of the replacement for the main that was broken right after the storm down in the marsh. Mm. That was our, repl our repair to it, correct? That you is correct. That yeah. Good. It's a portion of that cost of repair, which is fine. We're not going to contest that at all. Uh, I, I believe I handed to each of you a summarization of the operations of the wastewater treatment plant yes. during this past year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people should know that uh, Public Works has been doing a terrific job. Uh, they've really been processing a lot of material down there. Uh, in 2017, they processed 925 million gallons of sewage. In 2018, they processed 1.017.25 million gallons of sewage. Mm. Uh, that's quite an increase, 9.97%. Um, we've also taken in a lot less uh, septage. We, in, in, in 17, we took in 2,093,500 gallons. And in, 90, in 18, we took in 1,905,000 gallons. Mm. That's simply because the Epping plant is now back in operation. Uh -huh. uh, we've been doing very good. We, we have been holding our uh, requirements with the state uh, DES and with federal uh, pollution control facilities. So that's that's been a very interesting uh, process as we go through it. Uh, we also had a situation, and I believe you've all received this report um, from Public Works, came through my office, about uh, the buried cable vision uh, yeah. mm -hmm. lines up in Maplewood and Driftwood subdivision. Yeah. It appears that uh, those were all buried like an inch below the ground surface in the road. Um, and in fact, some of them have been torn up, uh, gouged up, I should say. Um, no wonder. We're, we're looking into it uh, because it doesn't appear that the town ever issued the permits to have it installed to begin with. <laughs> when they did the subdivision, somebody just laid some condo at the side of the road and threw some tower over the top of it, <laughs> which is not exactly the preferred way to do this. So. Uh, if people out there all of a sudden start losing their cable, it's because somebody's probably been digging. Either that or they're using a pogo stick and they punched a hole through <laughs> these conduits. And some of them look pretty bad. We what did provide mess. you some pictures. So that's, uh, that's it. We also received an uh, update, from, infrastructure update from Aquarion with regards to their wells. And of course, they came in and talked to you recently. So yeah. I've given you a copy of that update as well. Good. That is it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions of the board? Oh, the town manager about his report. Yeah. I just on the Church Street thing. Uh, Sir, you know Jerry was here and talked about yes being able to get out. Are we making right. sure that people are able to get out of? I mean, if if it's blocked off, can they go the other way? We actually closed Church Street several days this past week, um, simply because you couldn't get through. You had to come down and go across yeah. and, and go back up Highland in order to get out or down yeah. down Brown Avenue because the road was actually excavated its entire width mm -hmm. in order to get the manholes in and, and to work under the uh, water and gas lines. Can we put so, a bit? So well, they're so done with that now. They're, they're done? They're, they're just about done with that. And what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to redo the road top, yeah. come in and put a temporary pavement, yeah. pavement surface on it so people will be able to drive down. It's very rutted now yeah. because of the weather. Mm -hmm. and uh, the storms that we've had. So they're trying to work on that to get it done and straightened out so mm -hmm. people can get through there on a much more friendly basis. Mm -hmm. But I think can what Jerry was saying... People go the other way? What, it, it, when the road is closed, can we make sure that... They have to come down and go across to where the entrance to the, 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 for the, uh, parking, the parking lot is, across to Highland and go out Highland. One, or one Brown. of the problems is there was no sign at yeah. the beginning. Yeah, there you was. Had, there wasn't because I, I got came. I there. came down one morning and I said, "Where are all the signs?" Yeah, there yeah. were no yeah. signs because it happened to me. So, yeah. so can we just be a little bit more proactive on that? If we close that road, I'll let they've those got, people know. They've already received now. an emphasis from me that they should be more than proactive. And, and along with the uh, the emails or whatever we've been doing, yes, make sure yeah, that yeah, yes, he didn't get an email either. He right. said, "So let's yep. make sure those people aren't stuck." We don't want to get stuck. That's, we already have enough problems with, with, with work without getting people stuck yeah. as well. Because a lot of people didn't know that you could go down Brown. Yeah. yeah. Anything That's else? True. There it is. Yeah. Can we put a notice on Channel 22? Because we've got the town website right 
on the computer, you know, if you could put it, well, that's like you're talking about trash collection and whatever, and just put a big notice, attention, you know, people on Church Street. Well, I think it's, it works better if we do the email part of it because people have signed, signed up. up for that to oh, do that. Oh, okay. okay. They okay. should know. I don't have a question about that. I just want to, I guess the Senator is going to stay. I just got to receive something from Mindy Mesmer that I wanted to inform the board about. Huh. Okay. Okay. So. Well, why don't we do that? Is it old business? So yeah. All right. Well, let's. We done for old business first, and then we'll have. If anybody has anything else in the old business. Yeah. All right. So the first thing under old business is the JOP with the state. <laughs> the uh, town manager has uh, written a letter to the state, and asked them to get in touch with us as soon as possible. Right. To sit down and discuss the JOP. Yeah. So that's where that is. Okay. Before April 1st, we hope. Well, before the we've asked them to do it as soon as possible. I'd rather yes. have it sooner than April 1st. So, can't can't tell you. I talked to the director. Um, we were up there testifying on a bill. He was there as well. Yeah. Um, I talked to him after the bill, and I asked him if he would uh, set a date to come and talk with us. And he said, "It's nice to see you," and walked away. And that's why I asked that's why I wrote the letter because put, I get no put a letter in writing. Yes. We've so. put it in writing now. Let's wait till we yeah. hear a response. Yeah. So Selectman's representative Aquarium. Uh, Regina brought up before that she didn't want to do that anymore. I know Jim. Uh, yeah, I got an interest in that. All right. I'll I'll make that motion that Jim take over as the uh, representative to Aquarium. Okay. Do you have a second? I'll second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Rail trail agreement. It seems like it? we've already done that. So, <laughs> Regina, would under old business. Yes, and I don't know if uh, Senator Sherman might know more about this, but I was just told that someone in Rye is trying to get the select board there to establish a Rockingham County Commission as opposed to a statewide commission. Do you know anything about that? May I speak? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I don't. I, I'm on the statewide drinking water quality commission. I was just appointed to that. Um, and this may be in response to the drinking water quality commission that you and. Okay. There's a bill that is to. Re I'm just trying to clarify it. There's a bill that, re remember, it was going to go away. Right. Oh, yeah. And so that was reintroduced as a bill in the House. And so this may be an attempt to get it to be put under the purview of the Rockingham Planning Commission. Okay. Um, which the concern is that, from my standpoint and Representative Mesmer's, former Representative Mesmer's standpoint, right. is this is not just a regional issue, this is a statewide right. issue. So. Um, I'm not sure that there needs to be any specific action, but maybe just a heads up that this effort may be coming. Okay. No, I mean, future. I just happened to receive that, and you yeah, happened try to, to be clarify here, it. so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I happened to receive it about the same time, so. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Thank you. That's what you get for coming. And he also said, old business. <laughs> Glad to be here. New business. Deliberative session assignments and motion to second. <sighs> And Warren articles. Well, Mr. Chairman, may I suggest that the board start with Article 11, the budget. Um, Article 1 is election of officers. That's, that's self-explanatory. And Articles 2 through 10 are the planning department. They, right. they prepare their own and, and do their own. So I'd I like would suggest you begin with the budget. Make the motion for the budget. Jim, okay. I'll second. You want to second it? I just want to say that I have uh, an appointment that I'm going to be at the meeting at approximately 10:15, so okay. I'll start at like maybe 20. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so the sergeants. Yeah. I might be able to change it, but I won't know. No, that's fine. Long. I'll I'll make that motion. Article 12. S yeah, 12. Okay. Second. I'll second I'll it. Second. Oops. Go ahead, Marjana. I'll second it. Patrolmans. I'll Oops. make the motion. All right, and I'll second. Uh, Article 14. Combat credit. I'll do that one. I'll second it. Veterans tax credit. I'll make oh. the motion. All right. 
Jim? I'll second it. Tax credit disability? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Turnout gear. I'll make that motion. All right, I'll second. Four firefighters, I'll make that motion. I'll that's, second that. That's the grant, the, uh, the uh, safer grant. Yep. Revaluation. I'll make that one. I'll second. Code enforcement officer. I will make that motion. I'll second it. I should be back by that time. If you're not, I'll, <laughs> if you're not, I'll do it. Highway block grant. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Road improvements. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. DPW trucks. I'll do that. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Culvert. I'll move that. I'll second. Five year lease dump truck. I'll make that. I'll second. Eject trailer. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. We need more. We need less R's on the board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DPW waterline. I'll yeah, make that I'll, motion. I'll All second. Right. Place lighting. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Sidewalk improvement fund. I'll, I'll second that. I mean, I'll most make the motion. I'll second it. Hazardous waste day. I'll what? make that. Oh, hazardous waste. Yeah, I'll second. Cemetery improvements. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Cemetery tractor. I'll make that. Second. Cemetery tree removal. I'll make that. I'll second it. Park and Rex upgrades. I'll make the motion. Right. Second. IT upgrades. I'll, I'll make, motion that. All right. I'll second. Human services. I'll make that motion. And I'll second that one as well if that's okay. Electronic format. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Please forfeiture. I'll, I'll move. Second. Inside doors. I'll move that one as well. I'll second it. Naval committee. I'll make that. I'll second it. Repeal emergency calls. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Police attendance fee. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. HB a goat closure. I'll make that. I'll second it. Conservation fund. I'll move. Oh, you move. I'll second. I'll move it. Regina second. Heritage committee. I'll move that. I'll second it. Experience Hampton. I'll make that. I'll second it. Service flag holders. I'll make that. Second. Oh. Are you, I'm, oh, yeah, you're on 47, right? Yep. Okay, who seconded? Rick. Rick. Mace Road Sidewalk. I'll make the motion. Yeah, that's a, that's a petition. That's a petition. Oh. These are petitions. Yeah. So we don't have to do that. We the, don't need They the should petitions. be down on the floor. Yeah. 40, 48, 49, 50. 50 right. right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That wasn't too painful. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Until we get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one is 
Smallwood request for connection of the storm drain at 47 Falcone Circle. Mr. Manager. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Public Works Department recommends approval subject to appropriate documentation and, and documents to be prepared by Town Council. Also move. Move. Second. I'll second. Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. Permission for Army Corps and the New Hampshire DOT to use property in Hampton for harbor dredging. I'll Yay. make that motion. I'll second. Yeah. And we all know what this is. It's property under the harbor, under yeah, the water. Under the water, yeah. Yeah. So, motion seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Senate Bill 68, short-term rentals. That's the one we just discussed with Right. No. 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 Another no. one. No. Um, Good grief. This is actually uh, Senate Bill 69 rather than 68. Yeah. And okay. Oh. This, this has to do with uh, short-term rentals. Uh, the first part of it is the same type of enabling legislation to give uh, towns the ability, and, and actually this is giving the selectment of a town the ability to, by ordinance or regulation, provide for licensing of short-term rentals, uh. Uh, better known as Airbnbs. Um, it also goes on to give the state fire marshal's office and town health officers uh, various inspection powers that they do not have. Um, this section is not interpreted to limit a municipality's authority to regulate as zoning, but it is basically a, a separate type of uh, remedy. Um, we uh, were requested to support this by the Municipal Association. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's a more prominent issue for a, town, a city like Portsmouth yeah. that seems to have it in the news all the time. Uh, this is going to be heard in committee on Wednesday. Unfortunately, it's at the same time as mm. our planning session for the deliberative right. session. So mm. um, Fred and I could not go to that ourselves, but right. we could write something right. if the board chose to support this. I'll be happy to move that, Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. Any this questions? Is, this is kind of a modification of RSA 48A, which is the Housing Standards Ordinance, yeah. but doesn't get into the depth that that particular law gets into. This is much more friendly. It's a user-friendly sort of situation. Good. And could I ask you a question? Sure. Um, would this give the, I know we do have some issues, maybe not as much as Portsmouth has, but right. we talked about this at the NHMA conference mm -hmm. I went to. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this would be, it would give us a little more power to regulate certain things that we right. find out might not be working so well? Well, most of the problems that we have now are because people come in for assistance and we find out about these particular problems uh, where yeah. someone is, is renting out a room in a house, there is no right. secondary access for fire, there's no yeah. appropriate stairways, there's no fire extinguishers, there's no a lot of things, uh, no fire, fire codes, anything. No uh, fire alarms or, or smoke alarms or anything like that. This would require those things to be there, which is re already required by law. Right. But this just gives the town a little more muscle to go ahead and, in fact, inspect the property right. and tell them they have to install them. Like the mess we had at the end of Lafayette, south end of Lafayette Road? Close. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. that's a good idea. Any other questions? The motion is to allow the mm -hmm. town manager and council to send a letter to support up that. of yeah. support. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know we're at the closing comments. If there's if there's no other new, new business, just appreciate the board making a motion to go into a non-public session under New Hampshire RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small c uh, reputation. C. C. Yeah, C. reputation. I'll is there any other, is there any, first of all, is there any closing comments? No. We have, we have Mary Louise has made a motion. The RSA. Do we have a second? I need a roll call vote. All aye. those in favor? Aye. 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 Time. Aye. Well, give me a second. <laughs> we are going into non-public. I don't necessarily trust the 9 9-11. 9-11. <laughs> Nancy and Senator, thank you thank for coming. You. Uh, what a bye.